Hi, for this video what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate a power function and it's a power function because of the fact that there's an exponent on the variable. So I have x squared, um, 3x cubed, etc. There is some kind of power on a variable. So for this what we are going to do is we're going to evaluate which means to replace in the equation indicated um, the variable with the given value. So in this case it tells us to evaluate the f equation with negative 7. So what we are going to do is we are going to plug in negative 7 wherever we have an x. So the 3 would stay the same and it's going to be on the outside of the parentheses because we do not square that. We only square the x term. So be very careful when you have negatives and you're plugging it in that if you're putting it into your calculator that you do put the negative 7 squared in parentheses or you will get the wrong answer. So with this, what we're going to do is we're going to re also replace the other negative x with negative 7. And then we would simplify this expression. So with this, remember that since I'm squaring a negative 7, that would give us a positive 49. And then since I have a double negative 7 here, I would add the 7 at the end. So we would do 3 times 49, which is 147, plus 7. And we find that when we add that together, that f of negative 7 ends up giving us 154. Okay, so that tells us that when we plug in negative 7 into this expression, we end up with 154 as our output. For the next one, what we are doing is this time it tells us to look at our g equation, since it says g of negative 4. And since it's telling us to look at the g equation, that tells us we're going to look at this one here, and we're going to replace all of our x values with negative 4. So the 3 would stay on the outside. This time we have negative 4 to the third power, which means that since I have an odd number of negatives, that I will have a negative output. And then we have to keep the minus 1. So the 3 and the negative 1 stay. The x cubed, I replace it with negative 4 cubed. So then we would simplify. Remember that negative 4 to the third power really means negative 4 times negative 4, which is positive 16. And then positive 16 times negative 4, which gives us negative 64. The thing with power functions, anytime you're dealing with exponents, um, they end up getting large very quickly. So you will get a lot larger outputs with these particular types of expressions rather or functions rather than a linear. Linear function, unless you have a really large slope, it does not increase nearly as quickly. So with this, if we simplify, 3 times negative 64 gives us a negative 192 minus 1. So we can say that g of negative 4 is equal to negative 193. So when I replace my x variable in this equation with negative 4, my output is negative 193. For the last one, I want to replace our x with another expression. In this case, we're going to replace it with a linear expression. Um, so if you recall, our f equation is 3x squared minus x. So if you recall, I just rewrote this so that you can see what I'm doing more easily. So the 3x squared minus x, I just rewrote. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace this x here and this x, whatever x's I have, with the expression x minus 2. So I really have 3x minus 2 minus, sorry, squared minus x minus 2. Make sure that any time that you are replacing your variable with an expression that you do put it in parentheses because everything on the outside has to apply to that. So this squared right here applies to everything in here. Remember that this really means x minus 2 times x minus 2. So if you need to on the side of your paper go through and expand it um, where you multiply this out, you FOIL that out, by all means do so. Um, the shortcut is that you always square the first term. So if I square x, that would give me x squared. And then I find the product of these two, which would give me negative 2x. And I will always have two of them. So this would give me minus 4x 
plus 4. And then remember here that we are distributing this minus into, or the negative into here, so it would become negative x plus 2. So don't forget this term right here. This is the term that I see the most mistakes with. Um, a lot of students would put the x squared plus 4. They would just square the first term, square the last term. But remember that because you're squaring a binomial, you will have a middle term. term. And the reason why is because I have to do x times x, which would give me x squared. Negative 2 times x would give me negative 2x. And then when I turn and I distribute here, I would get another negative 2x. And a negative 2 times a negative 2 is a positive 4. So this is where that middle term comes from. So make sure that you don't forget it. If you can't remember the shortcut rule, then always show out your work. So now if I just go through and distribute this in, I would have 3x squared minus 12x plus 12 minus x plus 2. And make sure, especially if you have a negative here, that you did distribute it to everything inside because you're subtracting everything behind it. So now if we simplify our like terms, we can say that f of x minus 2 is equal to 3x squared. I don't have any other x squared terms. I do have 2x terms. So I have negative 12x minus 1x, which gives me negative 13x, and 12 plus 2, which gives me 14. So this would be the final expression. You can't do anything else with this, but it would give you a new equation of f of x minus 2. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are other topics that you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.